lot of big caliber players and teams in the competition. But they have the one thing that a lot of the top four teams don't really have. And that is the element of surprise. Because, I mean, you look at the champion. They never really made it to any of the lands. They really they couldn't even make it to the uh, through the relegations into the APAC South once uh, when that was still a thing. And overall, it looks like they just sort of yet another, you know, sort of middle of the middle of the uh, run team. But, I mean, you look at the Operation League. Yes, it wasn't the, the top tier uh, league for them to play in. But you look at their performances, they were able to topple Direwolves in a few of the uh, ventures, really. And that happened not just once uh, during one season. It happened during both the seasons that the uh, Operation League ran throughout the whole of the APAC South. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly it. Oregon, though, on the cards, I, I am absolutely having words with Crow once we're done with the show today. It's just not <laughs> on. The man is absolutely done us dirty, but what's not being done dirty is this operator band phase. They've taken this quite seriously. The Ing Flores, Kaid, and to round it out, Diawals are going to take away the Wemite as well. So, I mean, look. Operator bands that you would expect to see on the map of Oregon. Xenox was talking about it yesterday. Oregon, the map of Flores... Over the last year or so, so well, however long it was since his release, he's really thrived in this uh, environment. But not to be, so I will start their defense campaign down in the basement here in Oregon. Yeah, Oregon definitely feels like it's it's a map that everyone should know how to play. It's a map that has seen quite a fair bit of action overall, and it's something that needs to be very much kept. A close eye on as well because I mean SCA in, in general as well this is a, a region that absolutely loves loves the uh, the Oregon probably more so than a clubhouse whereas clubhouse would probably you know, could get attributed a little bit more towards uh, something like ANZ maybe APAC North but here clubhouse uh, well sorry not clubhouse Oregon is the one is the choice the flavor of it all now Looking at the lineup that we so far are seeing from Champion, it all seems fairly par for the course. I am excited, though, to see Roldini join the Champion roster, seeing as he's one of the grizzled veterans of the SEA scene. So his experience for Champion roster would be absolutely crucial. On top of that, Sir Lodic, Firelord, Labyrinth coming back is a, a, a solid, solid trio of the players that can bring in the heat when they want it. Yeah, I mean, I can remember casting the likes of Labyrinth, Farlord and Silotic last year, doing bit, absolute bits in the Operations League. But right now in the attack, the Sens coming through. An interesting pick that we don't see a heck of a lot of in comp at the moment, Cthulhu. But if a team knows what they're doing, they can put that operator to work. And they've proven that they can be quite a powerhouse on the attack, not to mention the, you know, the weaponry, but the utility as well, the big green wall. But right now, Direwolves... Hunkering down in the basement, waiting to receive, for the most part. I think the most aggressive we're getting is Jackie Wu over towards the freezer stairs. They are waiting, and eagerly awaiting Champion to come to them. <laughs> yeah, for Dire Wolves, uh, look, it's, uh, it's a story uh, going to be of testing their own waters as well as their opponent's waters, really. Seeing as no more ED, no more Reaps, who was one of the players that sort of pushed Dire Wolves to a whole new set of heights. This, uh, to a certain degree, I, I would say that this is a slightly crippled roster. But then, then again, you also have the big, big element of the chemistry that has been developed over uh, quite a fair, fair bit prolonged time as well for Diawol. So they would know exactly, well, what can each one of their players really do? They would know the strengths and the weaknesses on top of that. So this is a great opportunity for them to, you know, try it all out. Fire Lord already taken quite a fair bit of damage. I'm not too sure what exactly happened there, assuming maybe yeah, cap it was either cap something like a C4 or if they're on... Oh, there was a Capcan. Okay, that's even more unfortunate. Uh, gotta keep... Look, all I'm gonna say, gotta keep an eye out for the, uh, for the doorways, but look, not too bad of a start, but definitely a much slower one for Diawolf's defense. And I mean, people might be looking at this roster and say, yeah, this is the Direwolves. This has always been the Direwolves. No, this is the first time this specific roster has been the Direwolves. 
I mean, Harambe, when he joined Ray Lee, so he and Ray weren't on the team at the same time, They uh, he mm. then moved to sub, Ray came back. So <laughs> they haven't actually played it officially as a core roster together because ED was always in the mix. He's no longer there. So now we've got our five boys in green at the moment. And they're looking to hold fast in the face of this attack coming their way, courtesy of Champion. Far Lord is so heavily tagged to push two and freeze are coming. Far Lord, he's going to win that gunfight against Jackie Wu. And that is rather unfortunate, but Harambe is going to get to dancing and finding some kills. Two, three now in the kill feed, looking for four. Ooh. It's almost all red, but Roldini gets himself involved, looking for more. The DMR goes absolutely huge in the Sen's hands. Ray C going huge as well, but unfortunately, Roldini, no time, has to contest the gunfight, and Dire Wolves will hold off. But Champion, look, it, they got themselves down there. They actually started putting it to work, and unfortunately, there just wasn't time to back it up. One thing I gotta as well mention, and that is something that I almost forgot my, uh, myself as well. Champion were, even back in the Operation League, a roster that was able to frag out. Usually, when we're talking about some of the newcomers, it's uh, completely the polar opposite. They have a good theory, but it's the execution that gets a little bit wonky or the, the inability to keep consistency in the firefights. For the champion, that's completely the polar opposite sometimes, it feels, because they have a great, almost phenomenal fragging capability. But it's the strategy that ends up sometimes lacking or being a little bit too straightforward, which allows some of the uh, enemy teams to be able to read it into them uh, quite quickly. So I think the dynamic here, especially for Diawals, is just to make sure that they keeping Champion in check, they knowing exactly where to expect that heat to be coming from and then preparing preemptively for that, seeing as Diawals did nearly fell through amidst all that chaos. It's something that uh, they need to be very mindful about. Round two, prep phase now over. When we get into the thick of things, the action about to begin. But given that this is a, uh, a dorm site, the downstairs stairs mirror window in towards dining, get to deny any sort of vertical pressure from below, or at least attempt to anyway. Given that you might see the nade play come through, they do have just the two in play in the hands of Labyrinth. So it may not, you know, bear fruit the way they want it to. And you can see already Champion have an idea of where they want to go. That wall is open into the walk-in wardrobe as well. So an aggressive hold on the defense of the side of Dire Wolves potentially could come back to bite them. But unfortunately, if you're Champion, it's still the Dire Wolves. They've still proven that they can go against any number of uh, teams. Unfortunately, they, they struggle internationally, but locally they've done really well. Yeah, the local success of Diawolves definitely needs to be addressed and mentioned. They are a team that can be very prompt and very quick about their execution. Pekan very much gets to demonstrate that to us. The man is quite skilled in uh, the art of just being able to completely obliterate anyone that decides to challenge him out right out there. And uh, he punished it pre uh, pretty quickly. So without Buck... For champion, things are going to get a little bit dicier. Yes, they have Solotic still on the Zofia, but it's not just the same when you have very limited uh, breaching utility. With Harambi out of the equation, though, at least that's the playfield evened out. I'm just trying to mentally work out the gymnastics of how that kill happened with Harambe in that position. I don't know if it was a case of Labyrinth was, uh, you know, on the ground looking through the footholes, or he just sprayed through the wall, or he just the dining door. The reinforcement did come. So they did fully lock out walk and wardrobe, but the power of a thermite being in play means that they can get that open nice and wide. Plus they cleared things out from below, so the meat jam was dealt with. The hard yards being done, and Ray C though is going to nullify as much of that as possible. They've lost the buck, they've lost the Iana. And unfortunately, it does not get much easier from there. They've got a, it's about positioning at the end of the day in an attack onto this bomb site. Two plays can just compound the losses. Not a single drone remaining. And unfortunately, all this utility being reset, Pekan finds himself yet another Roldini out of the round, and it's all down to Zoshav. What can he find, if anything? Honestly, 30 seconds remaining. Oh, just go sit on the roof, talk with the team, figure out what you're going to do in round three. Basically, yeah. Use this as the makeshift, uh, well, timeout really for champion they will certainly need this they're a team that uh, has been known to be quite uh, stern or rather very stubborn about really just sort of sticking out with the flow not really breaking their pacing but this is something that they could use as a way to uh, just 
you know, generated a little bit more breathing room for themselves. This is where they could really talk it all out, say, guys, okay, let's not... <laughs> Holy moly, <laughs> just that's do a it. big bottle. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Exactly. Just do it. Let's just do it. Let's not think about all the repercussions uh, that could come after this. Let's just play it out the way how we usually used to. Let's give Ooh, them oh, the best shot. Hold up. Frank. Was that a cheeky sneak peek at the 2023 Direwolves jersey? Because that wasn't half bad. I just did. Man, I, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it now. We might have some of the best uh, merch on the cards for the uh, Asian League here, down in this part of the world. We'll have to see. Maybe, maybe we, you and I'll have to do uh, some some reconnaissance and figure it out because uh, so far mm. it, it's looking pretty solid. As is the Dire Wolves currently. Their defense has been pretty uh, brutal to try and deal with if you're an attacking team, which champion are currently, unfortunately. Round three though underway kitchen and meeting up next and well again the valkyrie being in play the azami being played there are so many tools that were left through the ban phase that could be quite punishing for an attacking team certainly so i mean looking at the attacking lineup they did manage to change things around a little bit introducing osa to the lineup looking to make a little bit more of an effort to create some footholds to be able to sort of advance make an extra uh make an extra space and then well moving over to some further stages of the uh of the map so look for direwolves uh, they may have to you know sweat a little bit more but seeing as there's already a zombie with the impact grenades and all of that uh that's definitely shouldn't be a problem that's it big in the armory racy there oh this i love this i do like the intent here and it's an intent of violence harambe finds two. Oh no he's been absolutely cheesed no. cthulhu pecan was so ready he was so keen for the garage drop and harambe says oh wait with those yours never mind i'll take him anyway yeah look stolen the opportunity was there but uh, i mean when you're able to just absolutely pop off with a UMP, I mean, might as well go for double, go for gold, go for it all. Jackie Wu looking to try to maybe get himself another point as well, seeing as Solotic is the last man standing. 1v5, flawless round on top of it. Souffle feeling crispy, it seems, and so is the rest of the Direwolves roster, with now us seeing a third point to be ticked over for themselves. I mean, so far, Cthulhu, or our three uh, former Apex South teams have picked up flawless rounds to start off the Southeast Asian competition, yet to have the, uh, you know, the Harambe dance yet. We we haven't quite got far enough to start triggering the uh, the dance buff, but right now, there's still a decent amount of Oregon to play, which hurts me to say, but it is what it is. Champion need to try and shift the momentum right now, because they... <laughs> Could find themselves receiving a similar treatment to uh, the punishment that the Devil Dogs were dealt by Elevate. Yeah, look, I think the Devil Dogs, Devil Dogs, they would prefer not to really talk about what happened between them and <laughs> Elevate, really, given just how much of a hard spanking they were uh, given out. But for Dialwolves here, I'm, I'm loving the, the fact that they still, you know, they're keeping their staple confidence about it all. They're chugging along with uh, with all this. They're fully acknowledging that Champion could still be very much a threat. And on top of it all, they obviously, you know, seeming to be testing a few of the ideas here and there. They're trying to make it work uh, with, with certain lineups. I mean, the introduction of Mira for Oregon seems like a bit of a throwback, seeing as she has been countered so many times via so many vertical positions. But now, now we get to see uh, that will really start introducing some big plays. Not like that, though. Harambe got maybe a little bit too keen for that swing. Unfortunately, the shimmy wasn't quite enough. He will fall. Pekan's going to try his luck going at range from the big tower, but it's right. To find so sharp and unfortunately the Dockerpy is uh, is gone for the remainder of the round, getting aggressive down in the bunker. And a Dockerpy pick this early on could have well, look, it's uh, it's unfortunate. It definitely could have helped them with Labyrinth on the ground as well. Souffle confirms the kill. I was I 
I just do, I genuinely, oh, all right, all right, champ. That's enough. That's enough, Souffle. Stop. They've got families. It's just not fair, Cthulhu. Champion. Oh, okay, there we go. Finally some revenge. Roldini will shut him down, but I do not believe that Champion have yet seen a bomb site. Yeah. Look, I mean, it's quite funny to see that, you know, but Dev and uh, CDAPS and Crow did mention about direwolves not really uh, getting any plants whatsoever. I think at this point, direwolves sort of uh, channeling that pain over to the next team because with Champion being uh, unable to find a lot of openings for them uh, for themselves. Not a lot of faith is being really introduced. Looking as well at the points, uh, things are certainly looking quite rough. Two players still sitting on a bit of a donut game, whereas you look at Direwolves, it's all it's all fun and games. It's all fun times. Unless you're Roldini, stuck outside, being gatekept <laughs> by three of the five members of Direwolves. Currently, he's going to hop on the drone. It is immediately shot out, so he knows that there's someone lurking around, as you would expect, <laughs> given that they know where he is. So... I mean, again, the situation, because earlier you got time. There's 44 seconds on the clock. That's time that you could be talking about knowing, you know, we've got two rounds left in this half after this one concludes, barring some miracle, of course, because Roldini definitely could pull that one out the hat. But you'd almost want to just take that time, talk about what to do in round five, try and figure out how you can get at least two rounds on the board if possible. He's going to try and pop this Kiva barricade, though. He wants to take the fight. He wants a bit of revenge for the team. And unfortunately, he's not going to find it. Jackie Wu is not going to miss those opportunities. Yeah, not at all. Perfect timing, perfect hold. Everything so far about the Direwolves' execution of the defense seems quite perfect, really, Panda. The way how the crossfire has been organized, the way how they were able to just keep champion guessing and that was funnily enough actually the big talking point back at the operation league as well if you remember we've been talking about uh Daewolves falling almost into a routine with the way how they used to play even uh before reaps and then the acquisition of reaps during that time and now without ed without reaps they actually seem to be quite comfortable about uh, what they're doing almost their sort of strats identity uh, if that even makes any sense at this point uh, but certainly diewolves they they seem to have figured it out indeed diewolves have always had a pretty solid grasp when southeast asian rainbow six siege we saw that mm. for, for almost the entirety of last year they very much had a grasp on what the game plan was they knew what their opponents were trying to do Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't, but more often than not, it didn't. Dials were able to capitalize and make the most of it. You saw that absolutely massive runs through the Operations League and Apex South to boot. But right now, it is a new battlefield. It is a new comp environment, and it is a new year. Right now, they're looking to reach the heights that they were able to achieve and surpass them even from 2022. Hmm. Casting our sight back to the match at hand. Direwolves might get a bit of a cheeky awakening here with Fire Lord now introducing the Amaro. There's the Finko on board. We might actually get some high octane action from the get go if that is Fire Lord will be allowed to do that. With the Lion Scanner and the Finko boast. Might work out, but again. It will rely on the fact that uh, Picana will have a very hard time hearing the Garo Hawk as well, um, which, again, feels like a, almost an impossible thing. Labyrinth will need to be very mindful about that frost mat as well as the presence of the defenders. But it is quite strange to me seeing how concentrated that defense of Direwolf oh. is for the site. I think this is going to be a bum rush straight to the double window. It is! They don't even realize oh. that Jackie was playing the corner. Picard at range. He's going to get aggressive. Oh, it's an no. absolute <laughs> wipe of the champion squad. Zoshav, the last alive. Five players ready and waiting. The mirror window as well. Everything that possibly could be in place to make this an impossible push is in fact there and very healthy to boot Zashav threatened from the tower he's gonna send shots down range but none of them connect full panic mode he's being hunted from below he will kill Harambe but I think more a consolation prize than anything he is quickly running out of ammo he's got 80 shots in the mag 
to work with Cthulhu. And yeah, look, that's plenty for Rainbow Six Siege. Unfortunately, when four guns are pointing at you, winning that gunfight becomes infinitely harder. A minute on the clock. I don't think we're going to get that far. They just absolutely know. Sashav, a sliver of HP, will be shut down by Souffle across the big tower. Cthulhu, my god, you got to respect the attempt. Unfortunately, when you're running full force at a brick wall, chances are you come out second best. Those, uh, now that champion are in the big leagues, they get to experience uh, the, the welcome, the very warm welcome from the tier one performance. Seeing as uh, we reference back to the Operation League, but that is technically sort of almost like a tier one and a half, tier two league for a whole lot of teams. So in terms of how that rivalry between Diewolves and Champion did go, it was sort of still chalked to the part where do we do a rider up to a fully performing Diewolves roster? Or was it sort of just them almost treating it as like an official scrim? Who knows? We obviously won't know the full details behind the scenes. But in reality here, Die Wolves are certainly looking to be the most, uh, the most dominating force. As a matter of fact, we are looking at yet another, a third in a row matchup that is looking to be concluded in a very rapid manner. First four maps today, all coming up. Trumps for Apex South, I would imagine. Uh, look, Fury maybe loses out their matchup. But right now, I think the likelihood of Die Wolves biffing this one is pretty low. I think there would have to be some intentional throwing if that were the case, and Diewall's rarely a team that, I mean, would even contemplate that sort of behaviour. Souffle, absolutely monster numbers, 10 and 2 currently. Pika and Ray both have yet to die Cthulhu here in the sixth round. They could end the half flawlessly. Yeah, look, I'm... Oh, fine. boy. I wouldn't be surprised if that could be the case. Jackie were already starting to get a little bit keen on the approach. Pecan as well on the downstairs roam is looking to do a lot of damage. The one thing that is actually worth highlighting, we've seen especially, uh, you know, from the from the Elevate roster, and uh, the same actually went for the Bleed roster as well on a few occasions, is that both of these teams ran you know, doubles whenever they needed to do any sort of aggression or even on the defense. Here, Die Wolves are almost ba banking their chances on the fact that they will be able to just win their ones. And maybe it's just more so in case of champion and they just having full confidence in their own ability. But I'm curious to see how will that dynamic change, say, we when we'll get the opportunity of that Bleed versus Die Wolves later down the line today, or maybe even Die Wolves versus Fury or Elevate. Jackie's going to swing that double note. Decides better of it. I'm just waiting for Pecan to hit the gas here. He's down in the basement. Deep lurk for him. Wants to be able to make that late round pinch and upset everything that they're currently trying to do. So Shav, he's trying to walk that shield up. Get the angle in towards Jackie Wu to threaten him. But yeah, look, I still reckon Jackie Wu has a solid chance of contesting. He's pulled back deeper into meaning at the moment too. So he's not going to be threatened just yet. Souffle steps up, spots the player, the Pixels, but Ooh. true discipline. Doesn't give away the game, wants to make it a sure <laughs> thing, and he does with Jackie Wu's assistance. Jackie falls, unfortunately, but Souffle is still holding the ground up in Attic. He's going to go for the pre-fires over towards Labyrinth. But for the moment, still alive, drops the hatch, gets himself out of danger. And unfortunately, Champion left with 50 seconds. All they can really do is flounder. Flounder indeed, as so far, actually champion nearly managed to bring this back. Three versus three, but 40 seconds remaining. Pecan is still remaining an unknown entity. With the utility starting to being flung towards Direwolf's position. Well, champion are finally getting on the drones. There has been a moment and a half for them before they... Well, realize the potential behind the drones, but with the opening ready to go, they yet to oh. find the emphasis and the play off the back of that. Sir Lodic perfectly cleans up the position of Harambe as well. 3v2 with 15 seconds remaining. They need to make that move. Rodini on the plant. Pecan against the unknown Ray from above. Does he spot the pixel? Yes, he does. Plant it down. Six seconds left. It's all in shambles. Pecan just going to hold his door. Doesn't need to force it. Liberant to get a relocate. So might just be able to salvage this. If he's taken out, this round is over. Pecan, shut down! Exolotic will get champion on the board. It's not going to be a flawless shutout. There we go. Champion did manage to finally get themselves on board, but 
That was off the back of a gargantuan effort, I gotta say. Given initial advantage has been granted to Dire Wolves, they were able to find two very rapid kills, and from there on, they sort of fumbled a little bit, given that a lot of the positions were given up, but didn't feel like they were communicated quickly enough. And uh, whilst Racy was able to pick up a frag, but anything from there, that was basically it, really, for round number six. So 5-1 scoreline, look... But the Wolves, they're still fairly happy about it all. Matter of fact, they might just be able to crank up the heat even further now when they are playing on the offense, compared to what we got to see from them uh, on the defense, where a few hiccups here and there occurred, but nothing too major. Fortunately for Champ, you know it's only a single round and a half. Feels like the boot and rally has come a little bit too late here in Oregon. They're going to have to have an exceptional defense. They're going to have to trade the 5-1 just to push it and get themselves a chance at overtime. And it's a tough prospect in a map like Oregon at the moment. Yeah, defense is preferred side for the majority of teams, but 5-1 hubs aren't the norm. Basement defense coming through last. A little bit of setup coming into play for champion. They've got the tools to make this hold a successful one, but they just need to win their ones. As it looks champion art so far attempting to get themselves only the, on the path to the comeback but again that path is still quite long still quite <laughs> difficult and dangerous as well when you're still playing against a very agile roster that is uh, dw you can be expecting trouble to come from all sorts of ways now Interesting to see that Champion has actually expanded both on the top floor and the bottom floor right by the site, with no presence on the ground floor. Aldini looking to get extra sneaky, but the drone from Racy is about to spot that exactly the location and will be forced to fall back. So Flea not really yet expecting any sort of action from above, so... For the time being, those drones are going to be used more so to just shuffle the champion players around and see if they can maybe move them towards the certain power positions. In comes the swing, though, from Souffle. Oh, big damage that Souffle and Labyrinth still managed to hang on. <laughs> it's a shame. It's a shame Mikey doesn't have nades. That could have been a lovely little three-piece, but I mean, Casula, you talk about the brutality of this competition and the match that we're witnessing at the moment. We are now in the seventh round. Statistically, looking at the numbers, I know Crow will be keen to do that later on. Champion are averaging two kills a round, and they haven't even got their two kills this round yet. So 12 in total for the six play. This is, I mean, it, it has been a lockout. A lockout, in fact. Die Wolves, 55 seconds from what possibly could be yet another round in their favor, but they haven't really made a lot of progress. Still yet to make any impactful fragging, which should propel them further into uh, into the round, but 40 seconds. Panda, I, uh, I'm starting to get a little bit of a hint of uh, doubt really here, but do you believe in the Die Wolves supremacy on the attack? I mean, look, late round executes have been uh, a pretty consistent factor. And watching Southeast Asia for number six, but Exilotic and Sashad have the crossfire. Exilotic pulling off, it's going to cost him his life. Sashad for one, Roldini for a second. The hold so far, crumbling as best they can. Pecan brings it down to the two versus two. In the corner, check your corners, Harambe, please. Roldini swings, will find one. Pecan falls, can they collapse? Harambe hits the 180, but he needs one more with one second. He can't find him, no time, the shield. Unfortunately, the demise of Direwolves in the seventh round and Champion will double down and take a second. And that's exactly what will be the, the story here, I reckon, for Direwolves. Yes, they were able to play the clock excellently back on the defense, but the moment it came down to the, uh, to the attacking side, this is where things started really falling apart. Without them being able to find some of the early frags like they did back on the defense as well, it just looked like they felt a little bit crippled almost with their performance, with their play style, with what they were looking to perform. And yes, look, fragging power was all great, but leaving it down to the last 15 seconds to make that push happen was not the play. And uh, that's something that is at, at the moment uh, is a relic of the past, really remembering the uh, old 
Pro League days where Japanese teams would uh, basically base all of their strats around the last 30 seconds pushes. That is basically, yeah, just the relic and should not be really attempted to be repeated as it will bring only just losses. So that's something that is going to be a learning point for Dire Wolves, at least uh, with the downstairs site. For now, we are going to the top floor and, uh, well, with Champion introducing once again almost the same lineup plus the Frost, they might be onto something. They might be cooking, Panda. You have to see, they still need two to close it out. Champion have better won the last two. As it stands, I mean, look, we're into the action phase, champion, just doing the last little bit of editing across the site. We can see the positioning below that double window that we got to see out of Harambe, and rather successfully, mind you, as he did help contribute in a pretty significant way. There we go. Okay, so it is a little bit deeper on the hold with the shotgun holes. But, I mean, Diawals, look, I, again, I would even be more willing to put that last round down to more of a coin toss. It was a one versus one. Unfortunately, the clock wasn't there for them, but realistically, Diawals could have easily won it if they'd given themselves some more breathing room. Exactly. And time management is going to be a big talking point, really, for Diawals that I think will be another sort of separating factor, say, when we compare Diawals and Elevate, where Elevate looked to get into the action straight away from the get-go. Diawals tried to attempt a much more sort of calculated approach where i mean it's nothing wrong with that it's more so just the idea that for diawals this is something that need to be very mindful of and not get into the habit of going for those late pushes low foot angles or i mean I could, yeah levering was taking a gamble there <laughs> shield up does successfully pull it back in the kids storm rotate that could have been a huge disastrous position if he'd been caught out there. Walk in wardrobe. Starting to be opened up. And the crouch hole will be there successfully. There's a shove down below. A lot of our site presence still for champion. Oh, this could be big. Pecan. I don't think he quite knows. The nitro cell tossed in the master bedroom. Missed opportunity once again, unfortunately. But we're heading towards that final minute, Kasulu. All 10 players still alive in the lobby. In fact, they are. This time it's a minute remaining before the execution, so a much bigger buffer for the time for Dialos to make that move. They're still unaware about the presence of Roldini from behind. That could be an absolute thorn in the side of the attack for Dialos. Bikan needs to make his way over to the White Stairs because he will be the one to really throw a spanner in the works here, I reckon. And this is where Dialos could really make that big play, make that big push. Roldini as well, very much prepared for that push. Harambe opens oh. up. Souffle, massive kill. So Shab will trade him out, but then the follow-up trade comes successfully, courtesy of Harambe. Leverage play tucked in, will be swung on, will Ooh. in fact beat down Harambe. And that one-on-one -on -one gunfight, two versus two, Jack success. We get the plan up, what a headshot! <laughs> An absolute ripper, and Roldini claims the last of the Nitro Cell. Execution, head clean taken off by Labyrinth. And then the utility close, uh, Champion, uh, icing up when it's needed most, and they are looking to claw this one back. Oh boy. Alrighty. Definitely seeming to be getting quite a heater on our hands so far. When those sort of comebacks were happening, the most that we got were just two points. So, as the script goes, it seems like we're just about to be par for the course. Third point already for champion. They're not seeming to be looking to stop anytime soon. And that is that was the storyline back in the day for Diawals as well. Where they would be able to reach the sort of the fifth, the sixth point, but then hit the absolute struggle streak when they need to absolutely close out those matches. So yeah, this is a dangerous area for Diawals right now. Only two points separating themselves and their opponents and Maybe a certain frustration, some tilt maybe starting to settle in, whereas on the side of Champion, so far still very concentrated faces on the cameras, and that very much is being reflected on their playstyle. Very concentrated, quite prompt in the approach, and not really, really showing great amounts of tilt or frustration or mistakes, really. I look, I would imagine there's a growing sense of frustration in the Die Wolves camp at the moment. They were up 5-1 in the half, and 
No, I mean, they were up 5-0 at one point. And then three rounds straight, the champion transitioning in the close of the first half and into the second. And it's that frustration. You find yourself in these situations where realistically you could have closed this map out a round ago. But it's not to be. And that frustration grows and grows and you start making more mistakes. And unfortunately, that can cost the team at the end of the day. Oh, absolutely. It's just the, the compounding effect of some of the mistakes that ends up being the downfall of so, so many teams and players. So right now, Diewolves need to make sure that they just reset themselves. Zoshav already tagged up, but in the position that he is, he could very much bait Souffle to push him and then get blasted with a shotgun. So cleverly done by Souffle, he decides to actually fall back. He already done enough damage. He forced Zoshav to be a little bit more passive about his uh, approach. He'll let the rest of the team clean up that mess. With two less than two minutes remaining, though, Panda, once again, I'm starting to see the uh, signs of potential stall out by Direwolves. Do we reckon this could be the case, or is it the full throttle now, Direwolves, that we've grown accustomed to see? I mean, to be fair, proximity wise to the site, it's a little bit more accelerated than that round where they lost out to the block. They are primed and ready, won a trophy. Wide over towards top armory stairs. They pushed into the master bedroom. I mean, they got all the players, all the right pieces on the board to get themselves to execute. Pecan. Just going to look for a cheeky little angle. <laughs> Repelling up onto the small tower. Looking through that double. The Toxic is coming out. Harambe trying to gear himself up for the execute. That is a, a phenomenal little angle there that Pecan is operating on at the moment. With a minute left to play, they are in the right place. They just need to pull that trigger. And commit and look at Suflay's the one that do it. He pushes Ooh. deep. Roldini's gone from pit, and all of a sudden this hold is crumbling because no one was covering the angle on the trophy door. They pushed in, they spot the play, they dropped the hatch. They forced almost everyone out of this position up on the second floor. But given that it is kitchen and meeting, of course, the drop down, the follow is not soon after. Bray, he's there. He's trying to get himself in a position to contest in the kitchen. It's all about to kick off the Zulu. Oh, it's slow once again. The ED, ED1D comes out, but no, how is they, oh, how they fall out of this position no. once again? They knew that they were being chased. They knew that they were being hounded. All of a sudden, the shots are connecting. Far Lord is about to fall in the bin. They know where he is. One more. This flick back from Ray. They're about to shut it down. Zelotic for one. Zelotic for two, but Jackie on the trade. We'll push Dials on to map point. They're looking to close this out. They don't want to have to put up with any chance of a loss of points. Not at all. They're looking to wrap it up as quickly as they can. And not really give any more leeway, any more area to take by champion. And, and when when Diables are able to just this abruptly shut down any sort of defense from champion, I mean, this is a good showcase from them. This is where they're able to shut it all down, but it's also partially the blame it is on champion. When these kind of swings from Labyrinth happen, you should be pre-aiming and scanning initially the, the whole room there. Whereas him just swinging like this, that was certainly quite awkward. Well, one round for the Diables. And they join the other Apex South teams of Top League Rule. I mean, look, I suppose you'd, you'd call Elevated Apex South team. They're an amalgamation of different Apex South players. They've got the comp experience. So look, yeah, look, the three Apex South teams top of the leaderboard if this round is successful for the Dire Wolves and Fury playing next, looking to join them as well. I mean, champ, I mean to be fair, Champion have still put up a hell of a fight. Oh, yeah, Champion has been hitting absolute strides here. For, for the way how they've played it, for we have they've performed the yes i see even a 7-3 score and is not particularly ideal it's a 7-3 that still has been contested basically each and every round not a lot of um, foot ground has been really given to them from the get-go by dials and they made the best what they could out of it so big still kudos to champion uh, although I, i'd still love to see them being able to actually close out some of the rounds in their favor but that suppose uh is still coming but with the addition of Rodini, we can definitely start to see uh, some good improvements for the roster that previously was very much doubted by everyone. Well, first minute burnt and champion 
Potentially looking like they're going to make an early descent. Unfortunately, though, for Jackie Wu, he won't be following them. The sledge, just trying to do sledge things, was not able to shut down up on the second floor, trying to open up that angle onto the top of the freezer stairs. And was punished for his efforts, unfortunately. But the champion, look, even though they're staring down the barrel of the, what could be their last round in this match right now, they're still going to keep fighting tooth and nail. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I doubt that they will give up quickly and easily. They're looking to do as much damage as, uh, as they can, which is going to be something that we'll need to be very mindful of, very careful about how they're looking to approach this play. Question being is how well Racy and the rest of the team will be able to really perform here. Because with a minute 13 remaining, we might just see a fourth point for champion. I say that Roldini is already being pressured very heavily here in the showers. Yeah, unfortunately, he is uh, ganged up on, beaten up, lunch money stolen, and left uh, in a puddle of soap and, and scummy water. So he will just have to sit by, operate the cams to the team, and hope that his call outs will be the information that gets them. A fourth round on the board with 45 seconds, Cthulhu. Once again, we've seen this repeating trend. Like you talked about, timing has been a bit of an issue for the Dire Wolves. And Far Lord is going to compound those issues by taking Picard out of the equation. Now the swing comes. Ray with the DMR has to fire it at range. There seems to be so many problems in attacking this basement site for the Dire Wolves. With 25 seconds remaining, they've got to pull that trigger and they've got to pull it soon. Four players to find or a plant to get down. Either way, Far Lords finds yeah, yeah, a triple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is absolutely ripping and tearing. So play might be 13 and 6. But at the moment, that's not helping them. Toxic Canisters at play. The last one in Zoshav's pocket. And that's going to be enough. They've got to force it through. Zolotic falls. But with seven seconds left, they need to get in. They need to get the plant started. Souffle, someone has to get through. They can't. It's going to be a quad for Zoshav. And Champion will hold on for another. Fourth point for champion, and they're not out of this yet, Panda. Certainly the performance that they are quite hyped about as well. Not looking to get out of this Roldini, though. A, a stone-cold face. Looking to still keep on pushing the team. Boys, we're not out of this yet. Let's not get ourselves lost in the sauce. Let's keep it running, and that is exactly what they're looking to do. For Diables, another problem, another issue, another frustration point something that they will need to address and well, hopefully for themselves not get too deep into the the, the, the sad parts of uh, oh we could have won that round no no discard it all next round because early the possibilities of overtime looking more hmm. and more likely this champion team scrappy tenacious fighters till the better end Jackie Wu, though, is looking to try and stop any chance of a comeback. He switched off it there. For a moment, he was considering the Montagne. The Monty. But no. Decides to go with Sledge. Pecan, though, is going to pivot into something rather interesting. Nook here on Oregon. Pecan on Nook is uh, definitely quite a bit of a change in pace for the man himself. But uh, I still think that Nook is... I phenomenal operator for maps like Oregon so if Dire Wolves do play their cards right this is where they should be able to introduce a really nice element of surprise as well with Nook being if the Nook is being played solo on that flank play that could introduce a nice extra flank for Dire Wolves to really play around with whereas for Champion they need to make sure that they are holding steadfast with Racy already about to apply pressure he needs to make sure that he is not too hasty about his entry into the tower either as the drones should be confirming soon the location of Roldini. Nitro ripped and ready to go but unfortunately no one ready to receive the phone call I mean just just pick up it's not that hard just pick up the call It'll be quick, it'll be over soon, and you can just move on. Unfortunately, not to be. Champ, you're not going to find that freebie there up in T3, and Roldini's going to have to relocate himself to try and get into the action. I think a very smart call from Diawals there, and identify rather quickly, rather succinctly, that there is defensive setup in the tower. They don't want any part of it, and they pivot over towards the master bedroom. A great read. Great read, great timing on that read as well, Panda. As completely circumventing Roldini's position will force him to get out of his comfort zone 
The plants are yet to begin. There we go. The impact the MPs are coming through in quick, quick succession, and that should be able to deal with the mute jammer as well. So Shav, though, he has been a consistent thorn on the side. Yes, the KD does not prove that, but he was able to do a lot of damage, even just with his presence, though. 3v5 implies that, well, Diabolos might just find themselves the finishing uh, straight. Might at that. I mean, it looks like this is going to be the final steps here for the champion. Unfortunately, in their matchup against the Direwolves, they're not going to get the revenge that they were hunting for after last year. Unfortunately, Souffle falls, fells Zolotic as well. He's removed rather quickly. And, well, the trade comes with a vengeance. Unfortunately, the nade coming out of Pecan's hand is enough to seal the deal. It's in Roldini's. One versus four in the post-plant situation. You couldn't think of a worse spot to be in. The Keeper Barricade's working for him again. His teammate helping out from beyond the grave. But he's still got three to go. He's going to have to push it. The vert angle is being threatened by Ray. Roldini's going to find his avenue up the top white stairs. The Jackie Wu playing a passive angle is going to be the first hurdle that he needs to overcome. Roldini's going to have to hit some press paired shots here. Cthulhu, if he wants the victory, pre-firing everything. Doesn't quite have the information. Sees the traces. Knows that there's one in front of him, but can't do it. Jackie shuts it down. And Dire Wolves will pick themselves up all the points. Not wanting to share today. And look, they, they, they had to work a little bit harder than I think they anticipated, but they get the job done in the end. <laughs> Yeah, they got the job done at the end. Uh, the one thing, oh, there we go. There's the Harambe dance as well. That's what we needed to see at the end of it all. But yeah, you are very much correct. The job is done and that is something that they needed to get it sorted. They still get the points. Unfortunately for themselves, the round differential will be playing a rather unfortunate job there on them and uh, will be making basically them, I believe, third place after all of the so far matches with Elevate and uh, Bleed Esports so far leading the pack with their round differential. But that is so far, that's the job for the analyst desk to really uh, dissect. For us, look, I I've still enjoyed this. This was a phenomenal showcase by Champion. They still managed to showcase us some good rounds. And I think the scoreline that we did end up getting at the end definitely matched my personal expectations this is where sort of champion were tiptoeing before close to the end of the operation uh, league uh, before this is something that is now being served as the their starting point for this league i mean honestly i'd, I'd even argue I, I you know build on what you said i think champion have improved since the end of operations mm. league last year they're looking a lot better than they were then uh, honestly it felt like quite a nostalgic match it was very reminiscent of the operations <laughs> league that we were watching last year so exciting stuff but we're just the talking heads. We've got the desk to break it all down for us. We're done though. We'll be handing it over to them and then Guz and Xenox beyond. Desk, it's all over to you guys.